Today we're going to add a ton of horsepower and torque to this 2018 Mustang GT with help from Nettle Rock Supercharger. I'm here today with Nick, who is the Supercharger Product Manager for Edelbrock, and they have their 2650 kit here for your 2018 through 2019 Mustang GT. Now, there's a huge buzz online about this kit. I'm seeing records getting broken. Everyone's talking about it. What makes this kit so special? It's doing pretty well so far. So laid out on the table right here is all the major parts for our complete Stage 1 Supercharger system. Right here is the core of the system, which is our 2650 Dual Pass 3-Core head unit. Dual pass three core, well, there's a big old intercooler under this lid, and the air gets expelled upwards from the supercharger once, fills the plenum under this lid, and then is forced back down the runners into the motor for a nice, cool, dense air charge. And what kind of power is that gonna make on a stock Mustang? You, you show up with your brand new, fresh off the lot 2018 GT, how much power is it gonna make? It's a great question. Mustang GT makes about 460 from the factory. This pushes it to over 700 at the flywheel. All right, so we all know with an 18 through 19 Mustang, now you load these things up with the Magna Ride, their car, or the A10, and you're talking $50,000 plus car. People are financing these cars, so what about a warranty? So included in the price of this kit, Edelbrock covers you for three years or 36,000 miles. Now, what are you covering? Now, you're just covering the blower, or are you covering their engine, transmission? What are you covering? A little bit of both. So we have a three-year parts warranty on everything provided by Edelbrock, as well as a three-year 36 powertrain warranty that covers your engine, transmission, drive shaft, rear axles, differential, anything that could potentially break from the added power of a supercharger, we're gonna stand behind that product and make sure and tell you that it's not gonna happen. So the Ford warranty will cover everything else. You guys cover the drivetrain, so your brand new Mustang, you're still warrantied for 336 at 700 plus horsepower. Exactly. Pretty impressive. Now you said this kit is your, your stage one, phase one, what do you call it? Stage one. Stage one. And what is, is there anything needed beyond what's on my table here to install this kit in the car? This kit is 100% complete. There is no need to purchase any additional hardware or software or anything. Everything comes in the box. Now someone who's gonna install something like this, like you said, you have your warranty. Is there any kind of limitations on who can install this kit where the warranty is still being valid? That's a great question. It does have to be installed by an ASC certified technician. That's the minimum requirement. Okay, and how long do you think it would take? So if somebody buys this kit and say they want to have their dealer install it when they, purchase, they first purchase their car. This is about a one day install. Literally. It's eight, Literally. One, eight, ten eight, hours? Eight, eight hour install. It can be done. Absolutely. So 460 to 700 plus in eight hours with a warranty. Yep. Let's get started. All right, let's do it. So one of the first steps is downloading SCT's device updater software, plugging in the provided handheld, and updating the firmware and the file versions that are, that are on the handheld. So we got the SCT tuner plugged into the OBD2 port, and we're going to go down to vehicle info and get this vehicle strategy. So we get the vehicle's strategy ID and you send that to Edelbrock. Edelbrock builds you the tune file and emails it back all on the same day. So you just take the strategy code itself and is there a voucher that comes with a kit? So in the instructions, um, it tells you what information and where to email it to Edelbrock. Yeah, and we recommend doing this before you start the supercharger install to ensure you have a calibration ready to go. So we got the information off the car, we sent everything off to Edelbrock to make our tune. Where does the actual installation now be in? So we're going to start by removing the front fascia here and then the uh, factory air intake manifold to make some room for the supercharger. Put the cover off, remove these six screws. And then get these two little guys, one on each side on the end. Now we're going to continue working on removing our front fascia. Remove these screws underneath. And now we're going to move on to getting these push pins out of the way. Okay, now we're down to the wheel well. We're going to remove these three clips. This car actually has a, a bra on it usually, so these are screws in his case, but they should be normal push pin clips. But now we can pull back the fender liner, get to the two nuts, then hold the bumper onto the fender. All right, I can pop it off the front here. Carefully put it down and unplug your lights. All right, the bumper off, we're starting to eat the car. We're gonna open up the petcock here, drain our coolant.
All right, so we're back up with the engine bay. We're gonna pop off our strut tower brace, intake cover, factory cold air intake, and then work on the intake itself. Disconnect all the tubing here. It's gonna move our factory cold air kit. Before we get too far into the disassembly, then Nick helps with the installation itself. I do want to comment on the quality of the instructions they give you. It includes this nice binder. Everything inside is high quality pictures, their color, everything is marked, makes it really easy to follow along for the installation. Now over here on the side, disconnect this EVAP harness and the plug itself. Now we're gonna move the brake aspirator hose and assembly. So we're gonna pop this off of the booster back here. Move those two nuts. Disconnect the plugs at the manifold. Put this aside, we'll need it later. Now we're gonna move the nut on the firewall. So we're gonna move the rest of our intake tube here. The sound composer tube, I mean. It's a 10 millimeter nut, a small wrench makes it a lot easier. And take the supplied plug, and put it back into the hole. Now over on the passenger side, PCV hose comes off. Now we'll disconnect the throttle body connector, and pull back on this red tab. Slide it up out of the way. Remove the retaining nuts now from the passenger side. And then remove the foam. Pop off these clips, you can remove the brackets. Here, the foam off, let's reach down to here. We're gonna plug all the injectors. Get the injectors off, disconnect the fuel line here, and make sure you get a rag for this part. And same thing over here on the passenger side, except here you will need a disconnect tool. I'll remove the four bolts, hold the fuel rails on. Okay, with the rails loose, now we can get to the six bolts, remove the manifold. And now to get the manifold out, basically it's working to remove all the sensors and plugs back here. There's gonna be four total. You'll have to kind of lift it up, move it out of the way a little bit to get to a couple of them. I'm going to grab this hose clamp here. What we're we'll doing is just adjust this a little bit towards the driver's side. Just so we have more room for the supercharger later. All right, once you have your stock manifold off, before you put it aside, we have to steal this control off of this. We actually have to remount this in the car just to make sure it passes certain monitors for readiness for emissions. Okay, what we're going to do then is plug this back in. We'll zip tie this to the harness back here out of the way. And then both of these simply get taped off. Okay, now we're gonna bolt the coolant tank, move that out of the way so we can access the tensioner. All right, now we're gonna go down here, remove the belt. All right, Nick, all the stock stuff's out of the way. What's the first step to install our Edelbrock? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is install the supplied tensioner bracket right here. 
we have to drill and tap one hole, which isn't used from the factory, and we supply the drill bit and the tap for you to take out all the guesswork. work. We remove the upper hose to give us more room to drill. You really don't have to do this, but a lot easier for you guys to see what we're doing, and it gives you more room too. Okay, we're gonna drill this with a supplied drill bit 1.01 inches deep, so basically an inch. We made a stop there out of electrical tape so we don't go too far. All right, now we're gonna use a supplied tap. Okay, and I'm gonna move a couple engine cover bolts for our new bracket. Okay, we're ready to install the bracket. Now the two longer bolts are gonna go in each end. This countersunk one's gonna go here. The shorter one goes up top. Then the countersunk will have a washer behind it. We'll do that in a second. We're just putting some blue Loctite on the threads. We're gonna work on removing our factory tensioner. It's right down here. Now we're gonna move the bolt on the ear of the alternator down here. All right, and the last thing we're gonna move down here is this 10 millimeter engine cover bolt. Okay, now we're gonna install the idler bracket, basically with all the hardware we just removed in that location. Top of there just to hold it, and we're gonna lock tight all the bolts. Okay, the large bolt will go in the ear of the alternator. The smaller one goes underneath. We'll take one of our 76 millimeter idlers Bolted on here, supply hardware. Again, blue Loctite. With some blue Loctite, install the 65 millimeter idler over here on the bracket we installed earlier. Then install the other 76 down here. Again, blue Loctite. Okay, we're gonna put the tensioner down to place. Make sure you put the belt on first. Right now we're gonna move on to the spark plugs. The kit does provide spark plugs designed for boost that are heat range colder than factory. Now the plugs do come gapped out of the box. Obviously double check them before you install them, but once they're good, they're ready to install. Okay, you'll repeat the process with the other seven plugs. We're not gonna bore you with the details. You may need extensions, some other pieces. Some of them are harder to get to. Get the plugs done, move on to the next step. All right now to make a little more room for work, we're gonna remove these two heater hoses. Shouldn't be much in here, but keep a rag handy just in case. And now we're gonna move this hard line here to give us more room to install the supercharger. Right now we're gonna place the hose that goes from our coolant tank over. There's a new one that's included with the kit, wrapped it a little bit differently. Okay, we'll install the new hose now provided by Edelbrock. All right, now we're gonna prep the supercharger assembly. First thing we're gonna do is make sure you remove this plastic. So it'll cause all kinds of problems if you don't. So what we're gonna do here is take the O-rings off our factory manifold, install them on here. And you wanna carefully remove these. A little 90 degree pick is probably the best. They're not in there hard. Just get it up a little bit and grab it and you can pull it right out. 
All right, and then follow the shape. Install them on our Edelbrock. Now this 2650 will actually fit different cars. That's why you have multiple channels here. 15 through 17 had the larger one. These are a little smaller. All right, so we're doing some more prep on the supercharger. Part of it is installing the coil covers, which I think would be the last thing we do. So why are we doing this now? Well, it's a little bit easier to line up these tabs, um, temporarily mount these covers on there, and then tighten the tabs on here. And once you have them lined up where you want them, you remove the covers so you can install the supercharger on the car. This way you're not fumbling around with these later, trying to get them tight while it's on the car. So this just goes basically underneath like this. If I leave them loose and then line them up with the cover. Exactly. All right, so now we'll put the cover on here and get the, put all four in so you know they're lined up before we tighten them down. So push it just slightly forward and tighten these down. So what we're gonna do next is assemble the fuel rails with the factory fuel injectors in preparation for the supercharger install. Right now I'm installing one of the fuel rail plugs in the front of the fuel rail. And onto the other side. Next, I'm attaching the fuel rail crossover hose. Gonna make all these hand tight right now and we will tighten them up when we're all done. Because these rails are universal on each side, one of the ports here gets plugged. The other gets a male dash six A in fitting. And these fittings right here are where the factory fuel lines actually connect. This one right here will be on the driver's side where the factory fuel line connects and the other side for the DI fuel pump. And this right here is the fuel pressure sensor adapter which takes the factory fuel pressure sensor. Next, we'll put in the factory fuel pressure sensor from the factory fuel rail. So that. Okay, well now we'll go ahead and tighten up the rest of these fittings. Next, we're gonna move on to installing the factory fuel injectors into these rails. So the factory fuel injectors are directional. They have a dual spray pattern. So we include these fuel rail location clips to make sure they're in the proper orientation. Once you get the clip on there, install the fuel injector in the rail. Put a small amount of blue Loctite on the included bolts. And secure the clip in the rail. Go ahead and repeat that seven more times and the fuel rail assembly is complete. So what we're doing next is loosely installing the fuel injectors and the rails on the supercharger before we put the supercharger on the motor. Now what's the reasoning for putting this on now as, as opposed to when the supercharger is already on the car? Well the firewall clearance is pretty tight to the back of the supercharger and it just makes it easier to get this crossover in place doing this now. Okay, so we're ready to install the supercharger? Yeah. All right, let's pull let's this take tape, that tape off, off. Get it ready. Obviously make sure this surface is clean. So this part is most definitely a two-person job. This is not a light supercharger. Ready? Next, we're gonna install the manifold bolts. It's helpful to have a little magnet here to drop the bolts in. And the trick is here, you wanna get all the bolts in place and, and started before tightening them down. 
Now Nick got them started by hand, which is something you definitely want to do. Make sure these bolts are straight and they are threading in. Remember, you want to get all the bolts started before you tighten any of them. And you may have to move the supercharger around a little bit to get them all lined up. If you want to use power tools, just go ahead and be very careful. So after the 10 manifold bolts are snugged down, uh, Bill here is going to torque them to spec. In the instructions, we include a diagram to show you the order to torque the bolts. So now the manifold bolts are torqued down to spec, put the fuel rails back in place and drop them down into their respective holes. If you're having a little trouble getting the fuel rail in place, just move this injector harness up and out of the way. Thank you. So make sure you get the fuel rails fully seated and any of the wiring harnesses out of the way so the fuel rails sit down all the way into the injector bunks. And the next step is to secure the fuel rails to the supercharger using the supplied fuel rail bolts. So you want to start the fuel rail bolts by hand and it's helpful to use a ball end 5 millimeter Allen wrench. Now obviously we have to edit these videos to make them a reasonable time frame. I'm going to tell you right now though, putting the bolts in the manifold and particularly putting the bolts on the fuel rail is going to take some time. It is tricky, it's tight quarters, just take your time doing it, but you will put a little bit of time in this part of the installation. Uh, while they're working on that side, I'm plugging in the injectors and putting the harness back into place here. It is a tight fit, but just get the injector in place. They'll kind of pop in. Back here. And then same thing over here on the passenger side, just plug in the injectors. Just reconnect all your harnesses you disconnected and then plug in the fuel line. Matt, go ahead and reconnect the DI fuel line. Next, we're going to go ahead and reinstall the heater hose fitting. Then we're going to go ahead and reconnect the heater hose. Okay, grab the EVAP solenoid. We're going to cut this line off. Basically, just need a razor blade. Okay, install this on the supplied hose. Connect it here to the lower fitting on the front of the supercharger. For now, when we tighten down our covers, it'll line up with these two bolts right here. This part's going to be a little hard to see on camera, but refer to the belt routing diagram in the instructions and get the belt routed to the supercharger. Right. We can go ahead and reinstall the coolant bleed tank. Okay, you grab your factory aspirator assembly now. We gotta take some of this apart and remove some pieces off of it. We're gonna start with this end down here. We're gonna peel back this foam. So the piece you're trying to get is right here. So basically everything else can simply come off and be removed. So we laid it out with all the new hoses, but this is basically how it's gonna go together. Now we install the assembly on here. That goes to the front of the throttle body. And this gets fished back to the booster.
We're gonna remove these bars next. We're gonna pop off these plastic panels. The heat exchanger is going to be installed from the bottom, so we're going to go ahead and remove this bottom air dam. So we're going to go and back these cross beam bolts out until they're flush. If your car is equipped with this plastic anchor, go ahead and remove it now. So we got the heat exchanger brackets loosely installed, and then we're going to put it in the car from underneath. Instead of just removing the crash support bars, we replace them with these ones that are included in the kit. Now we're going to install these washers and nuts to secure the crash beams in place. And after you have the hardware hand type, go ahead and tighten it up. You want to make sure your heat exchanger is hung as low as possible and then tighten the bolts on the brackets. Well, Nick's getting ready for the next step. I'm just going to pop these caps off now. Next, we're gonna assemble this damper onto the water pump and then the water pump onto this bracket. It's helpful to use a little silicon spray here. You're going to want to clock this pump so it's about parallel with the bracket. So the hoses are all labeled. You want to take the side that says water pump and attach to the water pump. But first, we're going to install one of these clamps on the hose and then push it onto the pump. Once that's done, put the clamp over the barb and that part's done. So the water pump and bracket assembly is going to hang onto these bolts right, right here behind the crash beam and you're gonna to have to trim the plastic shroud right here a little bit just to give clearance for the hose. Okay, we'll put the pump in the place now that we trimmed out our plastics. We're gonna remove this bolt from the factory washer tank. This is where the new bracket's gonna mount for our tank for our rattle rocket. We went and pre-assembled the intercooler tank to the bracket and installed the tank to water pump hose. We're going to reinstall the factory wiper tank bolt. Let's going to install this clamp. Now we're going to install the supercharger to surge tank hose. I like to install the top hose first so the pinch clamp doesn't get in the way when you're putting on the bottom hose. Now that we got the top of the hose secure, I'm going to secure the bottom to the tank. I'm going to remove one of these 90 degree fittings from the factory PCV hose. So one little trick to get the hose over the barb all the way, heat the end of the hose up and then with the glove, push it over the end. All right, now we're going to do some wiring. It's going to be for the pump. Connect this up here to the fuse box. I'm just going to plug in the bottom here. Let me 
ground wire, bring over here, connect to one of these factory grounds. The rest of the harness here gets fished over to the other side of the motor to the EVAP connector. What we're gonna do is go around the back of the blower here and kind of hide it with existing wiring. Connections are made, then go back through. We're gonna hide all the wiring. We're right, gonna remove our factory throttle body from the original intake manifold. So this supercharger has a modular inlet. With stage one includes this adapter for the stock throttle body. But if you want more horsepower later, we have an adapter for a 103 millimeter throttle body. Make sure you install the supplied gasket before putting the adapter on. Okay, then go ahead and install the stock throttle body with the supplied gasket and the included bolts. Okay, we're gonna put the stock air box back into place. We're gonna remove the lid and replace the filter. We're going to install the high flow green filter provided by Edelbrock with the kit and reassemble the airbox. All right, now we can connect the inlet tube. Now we're going to install the MAF adapter harness. This actually serves two different purposes. One of the things it's going to do is actually this is going to plug into the ACT now behind the blower and get it out of the mass air. The benefit of doing that is you're going to get real IATs on your dash now from the blower and not out where the cold air box is. Okay, and this plugs in right here behind the blower. Now we have an extension harness for the throttle body, so you can plug that in. I assembled the driver's side PCV hose the same way we did the passenger side using the factory fittings. Now that we've got everything finished and installed under the hood, we're going to go ahead and reconnect the negative battery terminal. Before we move any further, we want to prime the fuel system and check for leaks. But because the intercooler system is not full of fluid yet, we want to temporarily disconnect this connector right here so the pump doesn't run. So we're going to key on power to prime the fuel system and check for leaks in the front of the rails and by any fittings and fuel lines that are on the supercharger fuel rails. So next we're going to pre-fill the intercooler tank very slowly and then we're going to give it power to prime the pump. Don't forget to reconnect the connector on the EVAP solenoid. So we're gonna key on power now. The pump's gonna draw down the coolant and it's helpful to have somebody pouring as it's drawing coolant. Once you get the coolant tank full of coolant, let it run for a couple minutes so you get all the air out. Once that's done, install the cap. And once it stops, don't over tighten it. Okay, included with the kit is this piece of rubber hose here to protect the fuel line. Just slice it open with a razor blade and insert it over the top. So as the engine moves around, the fuel line can rub against the, the side cover potentially, and we just want to make sure that it's protected. It's not a bad idea to secure it with some electrical tape or zip ties. Next, we're going to install the decorative side covers. Before we install the cover, we went ahead and put these false bolts on right here. They're just decorative. So it's over here doing the same thing with the other side. So the calibration team at Edelbrock is gonna email you the tuned file. Save that to your desktop, open up the device updater, and plug the SCT BDX into your computer. Once you have that, you go to load custom tune file. It's gonna identify the device. Click browse. Make sure you're on your desktop, and here's the file right here. Open. Now it shows up on available tunes. You want to transfer it with this button right here over to on device and click program. And 
and you have a status bar down here that tells you where the status is. That says custom tune programming complete. Click back and it's okay to click exit now. Unplug the tuner and it's ready to go over to the car. So we have the SCT BDX plugged into the OBD2 port. We're gonna to go to program vehicle and follow the instructions. Vehicle updates, confirm. Now with this programmer, you have to connect to the internet. So I'm gonna use my mobile hotspot. So the programmer is gonna do some updates. Just be patient, it only takes a couple minutes. So the updates are complete, we can move on to programming. Turn key on, but do not start engine. Continue. Now this part's really important. It has available preloaded tunes in it and it'll be labeled what your vehicle is, a five liter Mustang. You wanna go down to available custom tunes, labeled E-Force, the 93 octane, because that's what we asked for, Mustang Automatic Trans, and select that. Once you do that, it's gonna say it's gonna disable the preloaded tunes. You wanna confirm. Program vehicle, continue. Now these files on the newer Mustangs are pretty large, so this is gonna take a couple minutes. So after the tuning process is complete, it's gonna walk you through some steps to clear DTCs. Turn key off. Wait for it to power down. Turn key on. Now the program is complete, hit done, and it's safe to unplug the programmer. And now it's time to fire it up for the first time. All right, so we started it up, we know that it runs. Now we'll top off fluids, then take it for a test drive. So obviously I've driven a lot of different Mustangs. I'm lucky to have that option with what I do for a living. And I've driven lots of supercharged 2018s, driven a turbocharged 2018, but I've never driven a supercharged 2018 with the automatic transmission. You know, I've talked to you guys before about, you know, manual versus auto, and it's like, I respect the hell out of the auto. I know how fast it shifts. I know what's the faster transmission. I'm curious now how it's gonna be with a blower. You know, this thing keeps the RPMs absolutely in the perfect place all the time. In addition to boost, it should make this car a rocket. <laughs> you know, drivability-wise, drives stock. Honestly, you won't even know there's anything there. I noticed it holds the gears a little longer because you have a little more torque than you had before, and it will learn that a little bit. But yeah, drivability, it drives like a like it did before. Inlet air right now is about 15 degrees over ambient. It's definitely not bad at all because you know how hot it is and I was actually idling for a little while before I went out for a rod. I'm sure it'll drop. You actually can see it dropping as we accelerate. Start part throttle. Even a part throttle, you can feel a noticeable difference. I mean, the pickup, the car just freaking pulls. I'll slow down a little bit. Now it's depending what speed you're going, what gear it drops into, it's gonna gradually change acceleration, but we'll get down to about 40 here and Oh yeah. Yeah, she pulls. So that was about 45 miles an hour, and I got on it, and it dropped from ninth gear down to fourth. And yeah, it just absolutely flies. This thing with a sticky tire, the drag strip, is gonna be a lot of fun. I mean, this is, I would say, even with a stock suspension on like a 20 inch drag radial, it's gonna be well, well into the tens. But again, here we are on a back road again, and 
it drives exactly stock, which is pretty amazing. gets up in a hurry. There's any drawback to the Edelbrock is that it makes enough power, especially with this automatic, that you really need a closed course to enjoy it. I mean, this thing will obliterate the speed limit in seconds. I mean, it's it's definitely a, a package worth considering. I mean, you've got a lot of upgrade left. I mean, like I said, we've, you know, there's, there's Edelbrock cars out there, the fastest one fast supercharged car in the country is now an Edelbrock and that's a mid eight second car. I mean, it's ported. It's a, you know, basically race car at this point, but it's still a stock bottom end. Shows the, you know, potential of this blower and just in this form here, you're talking 735 horsepower. And at that power level, it's still warranted, which is pretty amazing. All right, so I gotta admit that was one of my more enjoyable test drives. I've driven supercharged cars before. I've driven a turbocharged A10, but never a supercharged one. And man, this thing moves. I mean, it. you said 737, somewhere in that neighborhood it's Yeah, making. about about that to the flywheel. It feels every bit of that, if not more. I mean, with the automatic and the positive displacement blower, I mean, this car absolutely <laughs> screams. That was a hell of a lot of fun. The insulation, what do you think? Someone doing this themselves, time-wise? Yeah, if you're doing it yourself, you want a lot, probably like a good weekend for it, you know? You know give yourself a weekend. If you want to add a ton of power to your 18 through 19 Mustang GT, definitely check out the Edelbrock blower. And like I said, we'll be following up. We're going to have some dyno numbers with this thing along with some quarter mile times. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Make sure you click on the CJ button so you subscribe for future videos and click the corner up here for more videos for your Mustang.